What's up guys, Eric here, welcome to Rant and Review. In this video, we're gonna be talking about The Flash season five, episode titled Memorabilia. So careful for spoilers if you're not caught up with The Flash this season. You've been warned, let's get into it. Okay, so I can't lie to you guys. I have become increasingly frustrated, bored, just not interested in this main storyline on The Flash this season over several weeks now. If you've been to my live streams, you know just how frustrated I am with it and why I'm just ready for this whole West Allen Cicada storyline to wrap up. The only thing I'm really interested in when it comes to Nora is her future, why she is here with us, and what's going on with Eobard Thawn. The stuff with Cicada and Grace, like his story to me is so boring. All oh, metas must die. Like that's just, it's such a boring storyline. Who cares if Grace is the one that's actually controlling him, which seems to be what they're hinting at from this episode. Who really cares about that? I know that I don't. I don't really care about it. They could have possibly beaten Cicada so many times up until this point of the season. They've probably faced off against them, what, 20, 30, 50,000 times now? And had they not come so close to beating him every single time and then squandering it away, I probably would not be as upset as I am now. But I feel like we are walking through mud with this storyline. We are dragging our feet through mud in this storyline with Cicada. And this week's episode is a perfect example of a bunch of nothing. There was maybe three things in this episode that really mattered to the plot of the series. The rest of it was the excess show reminding us that Nora is still a liar. We already know this. The whole viewing audience already knows that Nora is a liar. We are already aware of it. We don't need you to continuously remind us that Nora is lying because we already know it. We are already aware that Nora is lying. And if we're keeping score so far, only two people on the show know that Nora is a liar. The big one is Wells. Wells is on top of it. He knows that she's lying. He's trying to gather more evidence. But here's the thing. We are dealing with a team of people who are all very, very smart. And putting Barry and Iris aside, they're her parents. Maybe they're blinded by the fact that they are her parents. What about the rest of the people on the show? What about Caitlin, Cisco, Ralph, anyone else on Team Flash who could be capable of knowing that Nora is keeping something from the rest of them seem to be completely oblivious to it except for Wells. Now, the other person that knows Nora is a liar is somebody who just met her, and that's Grace. Grace, within 30 minutes, had determined that Nora was lying, and that she was a liar. She literally, and, I, and if you go back and you watch it, literally calls Nora a liar in this episode. So we spend all of this time just continuously reiterating that Nora is a liar when we already know this. We are already aware of this. Why are we spending all of this time trying to prove that she's a liar when we all... I'm, I'm so frustrated with the storyline. And then at the end of the episode, after we've gone through this whole dreamscape scenario, Wells tries to basically out Nora to the rest of the group by giving her an opportunity to admit what she's done. He goes, you know, you've been keeping this from them. That's, that's truly what was going on. That's why you did it. And then he proceeds to allow her to not answer. She's not going to tell them. She's not going to do it. We kind of already knew this anyway, but then in this episode, now we know for sure that Nora has no intention of telling them anything. Okay? She's not going to do it. Wells continues to cover it up for her and gets gathers information. So the only thing that we really that was really necessary in this episode when it comes to Nora and unraveling the mystery is that Wells confirmed with Barry that the reverse flash was her protector in her dream world. But we already knew this. <laughs> we are already aware of this. We're already aware that she's working with Eobard. We didn't need to know this information. Wells already distrust her. He doesn't need to know this information. Who knows? Who needs to know this? The rest of Team Flash. That's who needs to know it. So we go all the way to the end of the episode. I'm holding my breath. I'm going, we're finally going to get the reveal. They're finally going to come clean about what's going on with Nora. And she's going to tell them everything. And then the back half of the season can be the team trying to unravel the mistakes that have been made because of Nora and Eobar. But no, that's not where we go with it at all. She just 
continues to lie and the rest of the team seems to be okay with it. And she's a bad liar too. And that scene where she's trying, she's double talking and, and things like that. All of that was just so bad. And I kept thinking somebody on the team is going to catch on to it. Matter of fact, when Wells approaches Barry about her protector and he starts questioning Barry about it, does Barry pick up on it? Does Barry figure out what Wells is doing? No, not at all. He doesn't seem to have a clue whatsoever. I'm convinced now that Barry is 100% a side character on his own show. And the show is now about excess and the West Allen family. And that's really what we're watching this season. And as far as I can tell, even the diehard West Allen fans are over this drama between the three of these characters. They're completely done with it. They're overseeing Nora lying to her parents. They're over the parents just overlooking everything that Nora's doing. And based on what we saw in this episode in Nora's memories, she is an unreliable narrator, period. She's just unreliable no matter what. Because even in her memories, in her dream state, inside of her mind, things that she's doing in there are lies. They're all So we are subjected to the fact that Nora lies about Everything, even when she's not consciously lying, she is lying. And I'm kind of curious if they were in Nora's memories and Nora was over there with Grace, how was Nora's consciousness still in her body? How, how does that work exactly? Because Nora wasn't, they were in Nora. Um, yeah. And what makes me even more frustrated is even though I wasn't happy with the content within the episode, what we actually did in the episode, I thought the episode was okay in terms of like visual effects. The acting was okay. There was a couple of cringy moments here, but it was all right. I thought that everybody did, you know, a great job in terms of what they were given. I thought the pacing of this one episode was okay, even though the pacing of the season is all over the place. So it's really, this is why I'm frustrated. I don't hate The Flash right now. I don't think it's the greatest show in the Arrowverse. I don't think it's particularly bad because the level of intent is really high. In terms of quality and stuff, they are basically doing what The Flash always does with visual effects and, you know, scenes and things like that. I think all of that is okay. It's just the storyline is just so... Ugh. Like, Nora is hanging out in 2018, 2019 for months at a time. What would have happened if Barry would have actually, uh, wait a minute. Yeah, Barry has done this before and guess what? We got Flashpoint. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It seems like everybody on Team Flash, including Barry, has forgotten about the impact of Flashpoint and what it did. Even when they tried to fix it, they didn't fix everything. This means, for all intents and purposes, that every character on the show except for Barry Allen himself, the Barry that we know, has been altered because of those changes from Flashpoint. Even when he tried to fix it, people were still not the same. Remember how much damage this did to the timeline? So they're just okay with Nora coming back and doing... Like, I know I talk about this every week and I rant about this every week, but I just can't believe that we are still sitting here thinking it's okay for Nora to basically have a staycation in 2019 for absolutely no reason. Like if I were them, I would say, you know what? It's kind of weird that Nora is here with us. She knows some stuff that's changed. She knows some stuff that's been altered, but she's just hanging out. She's just here on vacation and it's really dangerous for her to be here right now. But you know what? We're going to chill and just let her stay. Even though, you know, the entirety of season four was how dangerous time travel is. Barry would not even travel back in time to stop an explosion within the city. Just think about that for a second. We're talking fractions of a second he was not willing to do it. But now here we are, season five, and all of those uh, safety measures are thrown to the wind. We just don't care anymore, even though we know no matter what actually happens here, even if it's just a tiny change, it will affect the people in the future in ways that are not predictable by our team because they have no idea what Nora is doing with the timeline and they're just allowing it to happen. And even Wells is keeping an eye on it by looking at this tablet and trying to figure out what's going on with the journal and things like that, trying to see what changes she's making. But I'm just surprised that Barry, of all people, subtract everyone else on the team, that Barry himself 
is not more involved with what Nora is actually doing to the timeline because it's a pretty big deal. And here's another thing. What about that previous episode of The Flash where Iris basically cursed out Wells in the hallway for simply talking to Nora? She basically went off on him in that scene and we were like, okay, this doesn't really add up to what's happened this season, but maybe moving forward, this is the dynamic between Iris and Wells. And then, of course, that scene meant nothing. Because in this episode, there were many times where Wells was interacting with the Nora situation and Iris didn't step up and do anything, particularly the last scene in the episode where they're in the room there with Nora and the entirety of Team Flash and Wells accuses her of hiding something and Iris doesn't step up and do anything. No reaction from her whatsoever, except like with the rest of the team, waiting in anticipation for Nora to reveal what it was that she was keeping secret. But Iris did not take up for Nora with Wells. And you may say, well, that's just a tiny thing. But based on that one scene we got in the previous episode, it set up this standard for the relationship of Iris and Wells moving forward. Because if you want to argue that the show isn't necessarily about the science anymore, and you guys tell me that's not a big deal to you, that it doesn't really matter, then what should matter is relationships and characters and how they interact with each other. So if you don't care about the science and you don't care about the consistency of the relationships and the continuity of those relationships between characters, then what do you care about? A cool scene? An episode? One really dope scene? Who cares about the story? Is that really what we've gotten to where we just don't, that we don't care about the story? Because if you don't got the science, you don't got the story, you don't have the character relationships, what are we watching? What is the show about then? So moving on from that, let's talk about the Grace and Cicada stuff, even though I'm kind of bored with it. Let me um, throw out to you guys what I think is going on with that, and uh, we can see if um, I'm right or wrong in probably the next five or six episodes, because that's the pace we're going at right now. Okay, so Grace, what a strange character in this episode. So throughout the whole season, we've only really seen and interacted with her in flashbacks. Other than that, she's been laying in a hospital bed and there hasn't really been much to her character in terms of the story, other than her being the catalyst for why Cicada is doing what he's doing. But in this episode, we find out that it's quite possible that Grace is the one who is controlling Cicada, which, I mean, I guess that's an okay theory. I don't really care one way or the other. <laughs> They're both like the only thing that really interests me here is how she's actually doing it. And so I think how she's doing it is the shard in her head is directly connected to the dagger. It all comes from the same thing. So her in her mind with this, like, I guess uh fail safe that she's got now where they can't get back into her head. That tells me that there it's protecting something, probably that shard and that shard is connecting uh, Grace to Cicada. Possibly she is the dagger. Maybe she's connected to the dagger directly because of the shard. And because of that, it gives him all of his powers. And that's why a lot of times he does stuff that's weird, freaky, whatever. So there's definitely some sort of a connection there. How deep it goes, I don't know. What about the adult female Cicada? Well, I just simply think that was her projecting. That was just her assuming the, the identity of Cicada as giving us sort of a metaphor for what's going on with her and her uncle. So that's what I think is happening here. It's really, again, not that interesting other than the fact that maybe the whole Medicare thing will have something to do with her because she's a kid. And so they have to find a nonviolent way to stop her. That seems like it's the most likely scenario. And speaking of the Medicare, let's jump over and talk about the Ralph and Cisco portion of this week's Flash. Now, I thought this was kind of a weird way to handle the Medicare thing. It does actually lead into something important in terms of the cure, but the actual like scenes itself and stuff were kind of like, uh, this was a Cisco that I don't like. I don't like grumpy, grouchy Cisco. I think he's a he's supposed to be a fun lighthearted character that inserts pop culture and is the brains and figures out all the tech stuff for the team. And that's the Cisco I like. He's the heart and soul of the show. This Cisco, this broody, like, you know, disappointed, depressed Cisco is not the Cisco that I want. But anyway, that's who we get. Um, there is a rumor that Carlos is going to be leaving the show after the season. 
I don't know if it's true or not. Again, we have to wait and see what's going to happen. But if they're going to follow this direction with him, I would not be surprised if he's going to end up leaving the series. I would be really sad. I love Cisco. He's one of my favorite characters. But to be completely honest, this Medicare story is given to him because they don't really have anything else for him to do this season. We're not doing multiversal stuff. We're dealing with uh, time travel stuff. So he's not really highly important it seems in terms of the season which is why when he had his powers taken away it didn't really affect much of anything they can now breach with tech so and it seems more useful than bringing him along which is totally unfortunate but anyway so the whole medicare thing let me make something really clear here a lot of people say that the medicare could be used on killer frost and that it doesn't suppress dark matter it suppresses the metagene let me clear this up for you guys we need to stop giving the writers excuses for things that they do not explain, okay? The entire scientific foundation for suppressing the dark matter has to do with Cicada's dagger, okay? That's the foundation for this, which means they are trying to find out how to use that formula within that dagger, the, the components of that dagger, to suppress metahuman powers. This is where the problem lies, the way Cisco is explaining this, he is trying to determine markers on the metagene between somebody who's an active metahuman and somebody who is not an active metahuman. So that way he can look at the two and see what the actual differences are. This, my friends, has nothing to do with suppressing dark matter. It actually has nothing to do with Cicada's dagger, to be completely honest, because if his dagger suppressed the metagene, it would affect Killer Frost. Because like it or not, Killer Frost is a metahuman. She's just not a dark matter metahuman. I've gone over this in several videos. You can fact check it with DC. Any human who is granted superhuman powers is classified as a metahuman unless there's some sort of magic element to it. So if their powers are genetic or ingrained within them and they were a human before, that makes them a metahuman. So Killer Frost is still a meta. At some point, there was dark matter in her system because they talked about it a couple of seasons ago. I made a video about this. So the fact that now she's not affected by Cicada's dagger would insist that if his dagger doesn't work on dark matter metahumans, that's why it doesn't affect her based on her retcon story. However, if the cure is based on suppressing the metagene, then that would affect her, meaning that his dagger would affect Caitlyn as well. So stop making excuses. This story, this whole Medicare is just a bundle of garbage. It really doesn't add up. I mean, if they're going to do it by the dark matter stuff, okay, go with that. I'm, I'm cool with that. But if you're going to go with the meta gene, actually subtracting or suppressing the meta gene, that's a whole nother can of worms. The two of them are not the same thing. It's two completely different processes. So what is this Medicare going to do? Well, I think the whole purpose of this Medicare is so that by the end of the season, they can cure Grace, they can cure Cicada without having to hurt them. That's the entire reason for this Medicare. Because if Grace is in fact the mastermind behind everything that's going on, she's a child, they're not going to do anything really dangerous with her. So yeah, there's that. And with all that being said, I'm going to wrap this up talking about two things. One of them is the end of the episode where we find out that Iris is all of a sudden going to be starting up her own newspaper based on her blog, which she said that her ad revenue has been up. Good. So no yellow icons for Iris on her blog. So we're pushing into that story. I'm, I'm happy that we're moving in that direction. I'm really sad that we spent so much time in this episode doing what we were doing with the characters instead of focusing on a story about Iris getting to that point instead of just like throwing it in at the, it really was just quickly thrown in in the end and if I have to say anything about the family stuff in this episode the stuff between Iris Barry and Nora I will say it was fun to see Iris and Barry sort of working together within Nora's dreamscape inception world whatever you want to call it because they said it was memories but then it was also people actively doing things there was defense mechanisms it was kind of Mm. And even Wells sort of like had to add on to it later on. Like, oh, it's not dangerous because like, I was just like, oh gosh. Okay. Also, of course, Iris had to save Barry when he was facing off against the dream version of the reverse flash uh, with a gun within somebody else's mind. 
there's that. So they just want to continuously, you know, make Barry the secondary character on his own show. I don't get it. It's whatever. So yeah, we're getting the Iris newspaper storyline and we find out that it's pushing the timeline forward in terms of like where things are happening. Although um, when Nora confronts them about it, she goes, look, with Gideon, it was 2024. The paper was established, I think she said in 2021, I think is when she said. So now it's being established earlier. So I guess everything is being pushed up in terms of time. I don't really know. I, I don't, you know, if... <laughs> If that had happened, then Nora would already be aware of it because her memory should be affected by the changes she's making to the timeline right now. Because we really haven't been explained how the book and the journal actually works. Do they actually retain memories when you read them? Or does it like somehow remind you? Like, you know, sort of like you forget something and then like, you know, you hear someone say something later on. And you're like, oh yeah, I forgot about this thing. Is that how the, the journal works? We don't really know. We don't have an idea, really, of how it works. But uh, so there is that. So Irish journalism storyline, um, definitely moving forward with that. Okay, so I want to end off this video talking about the tease or mention of the Red Death character during this week's episode and how it's just all over the place. There's blogs about it, news articles about it, videos saying confirmed big bad, etc., etc. Look, guys, it's not confirmed as a big bad. He's not confirmed. He was literally just name dropped in the episode. Um, and people are saying, well, what about the thinker? He was name dropped. Yes. But the way this season is working out, it seems like they're setting up for a reverse flash arc next season because of the whole crisis event. So if we've got crisis going on and we have the reverse flash stuff being set up, when would we have time for the red death storyline? How would he be the big bad. Not to mention that if you know about the metal storyline and how this character comes to be, it would be very hard for them to do it without it being in a crossover scenario. It would be very difficult. But say for the sake of it, what about this Red Death character? What about the mention of him? Well, we know that Nora is a unreliable source. We had determined that she was lying about Iris and her relationship in this memory, subconsciously, unconsciously, don't really know. So how do we know that this is actually, in fact, an accurate account of what happened or a recount of what happened based on Nora's memory? Not only that, but Captain Singh, when he's talking about Red Death, he goes, it tarnished the Flash's legacy to some way, talking about the Cicada situation and how he resurfaced. So this is Nora's memory, supposedly. It's not like looking at Gideon and seeing changes to the future. So... Was Nora lying when we got the first flashback, when she was seeing Cicada there in that flashback? Was that a lie or is this a lie? Because I'm really confused here. Nora had no reason to lie to us, the viewers, because, well, that would be breaking the fourth wall. But lying in, in a flashback earlier and then lying in the flashback now, it would only make sense if, if this flashback, the one that mentions the Red Death, was not an accurate recount of what happened so this is why i'm so frustrated with the season like this is a memory our nora would not have the memories of stuff that happened that were changed because of her without actually actively having her memory changed in real life like her her like <laughs> I, how, how can i put this to make it make sense like our Nora, the one that we know, would not have different memories from the one that is talking to everybody. So this one that we see, this, this younger Nora in the future, is the same Nora we're talking to right now. So if her memories were changed there in this flashback, then they would be changed in present day Nora, the 2019 one that's coming back from the, the future into our past. I don't, I, I can't anymore. <laughs> Basically, Red Death is not confirmed as a big bad. There's a lot of clickbaiting confirmed or articles with confirmed or people that are diving into it. I get it. We're very excited about seeing Red Death because he's a cool looking character. But the story of Red Death was basically connected to a Batman storyline in the comics, which included variations of all kinds of characters facing off against, you know, Batman. So seeing a Batman or a Bruce Wayne version of the flash as the red death on the series probably isn't going to happen it's probably not going to happen so if they're going to use the red death it's not going to be this version we're not going to see it may look a little bit like this but it's it's not going to be 
you know what? Let me just um let me score this episode and get out of here because I've already taken up much of the time in this video. Um, I'm gonna give the episode. It wasn't a horrible episode. It was it was above average for me. I'm gonna give it a seven out of ten. I want to give it lower, but the episode itself was not filmed poorly. The special effects weren't bad. The acting wasn't particularly bad. You know, the problems I have with it is just the overall feelings that this episode brings based on the whole season. And I can't score this episode as an episode based on everything else that's happened so far. I can't do that. I have to score it by itself. And it wasn't like the worst episode. So a seven out of 10, I feel is a very accurate score. If I was scoring it based on like the whole season, it would be much lower, like maybe a five or 4.5 out of 10. But I, but that would be me just holding this episode responsible for everything else that came before. It. And I don't think that's fair. So seven out of 10 for this episode, but I'm not happy with the season right now. I'm not happy with the flash to, to put it in perspective, this tease, this one name in a 30 second scene with Dr. S with uh, captain Singh was more exciting than anything else that happened in this episode. This got more buzz on articles, on Twitter, on everywhere than anything else that's happened maybe even this season on The Flash, with the exception of the reverse Flash reveal. So that should tell you something about the state of The Flash right now. But you know what? I want to know what you guys think. Go down in the comments below. Let me know what your thoughts are on this episode, on the state of The Flash right now, like the season as it is, and uh, whether or not you agree or disagree with me. I just need things to pick up the pace a little bit. They need to move a little bit faster. But based on stuff that I've heard within four or five episodes, we are still dealing with what we're dealing with here and I'm just really frustrated with it. But let me know your thoughts, theories, opinions down in the comment section below. If you're new to my channel, please hit the subscribe button. Subscribe button. I always say that too fast and get tongue-tied. Hit the subscribe button and become part of the Eric Verse. I make videos like this all week long. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And please leave a comment if you are so inclined. That's it, guys. I will catch you in the next video.